Hello and welcome to this talk on indifference curve analysis. Uh, this is really an examination of consumer choice and we're just going to take an introductory look at how we derive an indifference curve. We assume in economics that individuals have insatiable wants. We always want to consume more and more goods and services. And we consume goods and services for a reason. It makes us happy. But of course it's difficult to really measure happiness. It requires an understanding of an individual's mental state. So economists have used the term utility to designate how satisfied individuals are in relation to the choices that they make. Alfred Marshall and other economists, neoclassical economists of the late 19th and early 20th century measured utility using something called utils. These were subjective measures of people's satisfaction. And they argued that as an individual consumed more of a good, their additions to total utility, which they called their marginal utility, fell. So, for example, let's suggest that I might like a pint of beer. So if I consume one pint of beer, I might get 10 utils from it. The second pint of beer, though, I don't quite get as much satisfaction from. Uh, for example, the first pint of beer I really needed, and therefore I measured the level of satisfaction very highly at 10 utils. But let's say the second pint of beer uh, only gives me 8 utils. So my marginal utility, that is the addition to total utility, as I increase my consumption from one pint to two pints of beer has actually fallen. So my marginal utility is, has uh, fallen. The analysis was also the basis of the downward sloping demand curve and revealed that individuals would achieve a consumer surplus where the price that an, an individual paid for the good was less than the benefits or utility that they received from consuming it. There is a problem with measuring utility by a subjective measure like utils. In the example that we used, um, I suggested that a pint of beer might yield me 10 utils. My first pint of beer might give me 10 utils. But you might have a different um, understanding of what a util is and to me and, and give it a different number. It's a cardinal measure, a util is a cardinal measure, it's trying to put a precise number on a particular uh, measure, in this case satisfaction, but it's a very difficult, very subjective measure. And because of this problem with the cardinal measure of utility used by Marshall, then there was a move to use an ordinal measure uh, of uh, utility in which you, individuals were assumed to rank their preferences for a bundle of goods given an initial endowment of a bundle of goods. This is something we will explore shortly in more depth. So a consumer would then prefer one bundle of goods to another and this would give them greater utility. Now this ranking process is a weaker measure of utility than the cardinal measure but actually it has an immense strength for that reason because it's not important to say by how much one more bundle is preferred to another. It just is, and you just need to say that. So you don't have to have some form of precise measurement. Additionally, the proponents of this measurement method, particularly um, of Nobel laureate Sir John Hicks, also argued that with an initial bundle of goods, individuals might substitute between goods and still derive the same utility or satisfaction. And we say that the consumer is indifferent between these bundle of goods because it yields them the same utility. Now, an example that you've got on this slide before you says that a consumer might have an initial bundle, let's say, of four bananas and five apples. Obviously, you would want uh, more apples and more bananas. That would be, you'd be much better off. 
than having just four apples and five bananas. So if you had uh, six bananas and six apples, that would be better than f four bananas and five apples. But with this endowment, this initial bundle of four bananas and five apples, it might be possible that the individual will get the same satisfaction if they swapped, say, three apples for two bananas. And so they ended up with six bananas and two apples. And that gives them the same utility, six bananas and two apples, gives them the same utility as four bananas and five apples. You've just swapped two bananas for three apples. And therefore you're indifferent in terms of the satisfaction that you get from this new bundle. And this is why we refer to this technique as indifference curve analysis. And that's what we're going to explore now. OK, so here we haven't got apples and bananas. I've decided to put down pizzas measured, say, in slices, or, and hamburgers measured in terms of the number of hamburgers that you have. But you could have different varieties of goods. And we're using just two goods here, uh, pizza and hamburgers, it so happens. But we could use um, hamburgers and all other goods measured by income, for example, on the uh, y-axis where pizza is. So let's start off with an initial bundle of six slices of pizza and five hamburgers. So this is point A on the, on the, the slide in front of you. And what we, we then do is say, well, let's have a look at this initial endowment and see how other endowments might be better or worse than this initial endowment. Well, look at... Uh, endowment B, where there are three, you can have three pizzas, your initial endowment would be three pizzas and three hamburgers. And clearly, B is um, uh, off yields less utility than point A. So you would say in this particular instance that all points inside uh, in the blue shaded area are what's called the dominated zone. All bundles of good, goods of pizza and hamburgers yield less utility than uh, point A. Obviously, uh, any uh, greater number of hamburgers and pizza, such as point C, where you have 10 hamburgers and 10 pizzas, then that would be offer you more satisfaction. You, because we prefer more to less, that assumption we prefer more to less, then uh, point C would be preferred to point A. And all points in the lilac coloured zone area are uh, preferred to point A. So all endowments in that uh, preferred zone are preferred to point A. Now, what about zones between the dominated zone and the preferred zone? And we've called them zones of indifference. And um, what were trying to show you here is that there may be some possibilities of substitution between uh, say point A and a point like D or a point like E so take a point like D uh, D you get four hamburgers and uh, nine slices of pizza and point E you get twelve hamburgers and three slices of pizza so what we might suggest is that these yield the same level of satisfaction if we could switch between them. So, just uh, taking that particular point, um, if we were at a point where we uh, had one less hamburger for point uh, from point A, we had instead of five hamburgers, we had four hamburgers. Um, that would be okay for us because uh, we knew that we were going to get three more slices of pizza. That would be the trade-off that we would get. And we'd feel equally satisfied at point D or point A. Likewise, if we um, move to a point like E, where uh, we've actually got uh, 12 hamburgers and three slices of pizza, here we've given up um, two pieces of pizza, but to gain uh, an additional seven hamburgers and this would yield us 
the same satisfaction. So point E would yield us the same satisfaction as point A. Well, of course, if we had m more data points, we could uh, substitute much more f uh, finely between uh, A and D and E. So here we've drawn, instead of straight lines between D, A and E, we've drawn a curve. And an important property we say about our zones of indifference when we look at them is that there's a marginal rate of substitution between, um, in this case, um, hamburgers and pizzas. Um, an important property of an indifference curve is that marginal rate of substitution. It's the maximum amount of Y, in this case pizza, you're willing to sacrifice uh, to get an extra unit of X, the hamburger, remaining indifferent or keeping the same utility. And another important property is that that marginal rate of substitution actually diminishes. In other words, as we move down the, as we're going to call it, indifference curve um, from D through A through F to E, then we actually get um, a diminishing marginal rate of substitution of hamburgers for pizza. So uh, let's see what we mean by that. Let's start at a point like uh, D and then move to a point like A. So the marginal rate of substitution is the change in the quantity of pizza over the change in hamburgers. Okay, so it's the change in Y over the change in X. It we were to use other um, goods, apples and bananas or whatever it may be. But with, we can see it here is a marginal rate of substitution of one extra hamburger for how many pizzas we have to give up for that one extra hamburger, then it's equal to the change in the quantity of pizza over the change in the quantity of hamburgers. So if we're at point D and we want to move to point A, then clearly for one um, extra hamburger we would give up three pieces of pizza okay, that's what we're saying here so the marginal rate of substitution from D to A is three similarly one could argue that we move from A through to F then we want one extra hamburger how many pizzas are we going to give up well we give up one so uh, here the marginal rate of substitution is one and you can see that as you move from D to A to F the marginal rate of substitution diminishes as we move down the curve so here we have a, a property of indifference curves something we're assuming about individuals and we think it's a realistic uh, assumption remember this is just our preferences that we're, we're talking about here we haven't brought any other variables into it we're just making some assumptions and your preferences and my preferences are different and we'll come back to how we might think about different preferences in another time ok so how can we relate the marginal rate of substitution with that of marginal utility well this is the point of this slide the satisfaction at point D is the same as at point A we know that ok because we just said that you're indifferent and this particular consumer is indifferent between point D and point A it yields them the same satisfaction so the utility that they gain by giving up three slices of pizza must equal the utility they gain from consuming one more hamburger so the marginal utility of a hamburger must be three times that of a slice of pizza so some maths so from D to A the marginal utility of a hamburger over the marginal utility of pizza, slice of pizza, is equal to 3. So, and that of course is the same as the marginal rate of substitution. If we want one more hamb hamburger, how many pizzas do we give up? So, in, the, in our instance it's 3. So the marginal utility of hamburgers over the marginal utility of pizzas equals the marginal rate of substitution of hamburgers for pizzas. So that gives us some properties of the indifference curve how we make choices we've seen something with regard to uh, with an initial endowment of goods we started at point A five 
um, five hamburgers and six slices of pizza and we showed that there were areas where which were poorer in terms of satisfaction for this individual than point A they would be uh, below and to the left of point A and there were points that were um, greater than offer yield a greater satisfaction called preferred zone where you want to have more pizza and more hamburgers but there were zones of indifference and that's what we've been examining with this indifference curve analysis so point D, A, F and E yield the same level of satisfaction that this consumer is willing to substitute between pizzas and hamburgers in order and will still get the same level of satisfaction but of course our point A that we had was just one initial endowment so for example if we just take our uh, indifference curve which we're going to call U, uh, U0 for example and let's just assume that that was the one that we were examining in the previous slide so U0 was an initial endowment where you were given an initial endowment at A in terms of pizza and hamburgers and then you were you worked with, with that initial endowment and we saw other points like D and E and F which yielded the same level of satisfaction but we could have started off with a different endowment, initial endowment and then we would have built a different indifference curve and that's the point about each of these indifference curves UO um, was based upon an initial endowment of pizza and hamburgers and then U1 would be built on a, another endowment, initial endowment of pizza and hamburgers and you work with a in th in through the zones of indifference to see how this particular consumer would behave an interesting point of course is that if you move from U0 to U1 to U2, U3 in this family of indifference curves so we build up an indifference map is that moving from U0 to U1 to U2, U3 you're getting more utility as you move north easterly in this particular indifference map so U3 yields more satisfaction or utility than U2 U2 yields more satisfaction than U1 and that U1 yields more satisfaction than U0 and of course we could have other indifference curves here there is a point about does our satisfaction ever end are we ever satiated S-A-T-I-A-T-E-D uh, well that's a, a, a point for a, another audiovisual slideshow We'll leave it there for the moment. Thanks very much.